What on earth is going on with the Overwatch League today? What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel into an absolutely wild edition of an Overwatch League news video here on this channel. So much stuff has gone down today on August 15th, and I just don't know why. Today is a wild day. We've got the Paris Eternal, the Boston Uprising, the Washington Justice on the headlines, as well as some other crazy stuff going on, and we're going to break it all down because right now the Overwatch League is in one weird state. I mean, it is concerning. Let's start from the beginning though, as the Paris Eternal kind of slapped the faces of EU Overwatch fans yet again when they announced the resignation of Don, Khan, Dridro, and Vistola. That now means that there is officially nobody from last year's Paris roster still around, and it also means that Paris have completely changed their roster from the start of day one. It is a completely different team. There's mixed feelings to be had here for sure. I mean, for Paris fans, this is a real bummer, especially for EU Overwatch fans. This is one of the only teams you have, and now it just doesn't feel like you have one at all. They're already moving to Vegas as it is, so now you don't even get to finish off the year feeling like an EU team. But at the same time, this team was not performing well, there were a lot of rumors going around that things were going to change, and they finally happened. What a bummer though, to see all of these guys leave? I mean, wow, not even Khan is staying? He's been pretty good this year despite all of the downward trends that Paris have followed, but hey. Maybe it just wasn't meant to be, and hopefully a lot of these guys end up finding new homes relatively soon. And from what I've heard, at the very least, Khan should be sticking around in the league. I believe that the Spitfire could be signing him, that's what the rumor is, don't quote me on that though. Aside from that, I don't really know if any of these other guys find a team for the rest of the year. It's very unfortunate, but that is the position you're going to be in when your team performs as badly as Paris does. I can't believe they don't even get to finish the season together, like wow, we're already halfway through the year and now you decide to cut everybody? That is absolutely brutal, and I feel so bad for both the fans and the players in this situation, and honestly, maybe even management's in a tough situation. It's a real disaster from top to bottom. But Paris were quick to act instead of leaving us all in mystery, as they've already announced the signing of their brand new core to join Wub and Dove. The new replacements are prospects that all come from North American contenders, and they got two supports, one tank, and a third DPS to join the rotation. And what's cool is, three out of four of these guys, with the exception of Croy, aka their new tank, all come from Odyssey, so there's going to be some decent synergy going on with this roster right from the start, and maybe that'll make it a bit easier to coach them and guide them in the right direction. But even so, it's not going to be easy. They might be hungry and able to prove themselves a bit better than the older roster potentially, but it's hard to see them finding a lot of success at this point in time because they are such a new roster midway through the season, mind you, and there's so many adjustments they're going to have to make in general here. And it's not like this new roster boasts enough talent to completely just take over the league either. They're probably still going to be league bottom feeders if most of us would have to take a guess, especially with a slow start that could be impending for them. If there's any good news, it's that at least a bunch of these guys are like relatively well known and somewhat hyped up prospects. I've heard a lot of good things about Rack Attack and Luke Mino, and now they have a solid like projectile specialist, if you will, slash flex DPS. It's not looking too bad if this is like their future, but this might just be a placement roster at the end of the day. Maybe some of the leftover Paris fans could be excited to see some new faces in action, maybe a bit more motivating and inspirational to watch them, but this year is essentially already a wash. There's no way this team is going to make the playoffs, and it's very depressing to see them go down this route because of what happened last year and the narrative and the storylines. Seeing it all fall apart like this when they were so magical just one year prior is super depressing stuff. Paris are easily in one of the worst situations out of any Overwatch League franchise, but I'm sure a lot of other teams could be joining them soon as it just seems like everything is going downhill with this league and people are starting to trust it less and less as time goes on. And while it breaks my heart and I don't like to talk about sad and depressing stuff here on the channel, that seems to be the ongoing theme right now. We are not in a very good situation at all. And we'll talk about that more as we move on to the Washington Justice who decided to trade Mag over to the Boston Uprising. Now on the surface, for those of you who have not been paying a lot of attention to Twitter and just behind the scenes in general, this is going to seem pretty shocking, right? Mag is one of the most hyped up prospects we have gotten in recent memory. The Justice were supposed to love this guy and help him grow into one of the greatest tank players this league has ever known, and he was showing all this potential a ton recently on that Junker Queen. But when you peel back the layers, that's when you realize the Justice had no choice, and this was a plan for quite possibly a long time. Just to quickly explain it for those of you who have not been paying attention, essentially, 
the Justice as a whole, like their organization, if you will, they haven't exactly been happy with the direction this league is taking. They feel like they're not getting anything out of their investments. They don't think they're going to make any sort of profit. So they've decided that it might be a better idea moving forward to have a low budget roster since they know they're not going to get much out of this league. They don't like what they've been told. They don't like what's in their future. So they've made this executive decision, and that means clearing Mag off of their books completely by giving him to Boston. Boston, surprisingly, was willing to take on his contract, so they sent him right over. One of the best performing players in recent memory for the Justice, right when it seemed like they were starting to turn things around, is gone just like that. And this could only be the beginning, as the trade deadline is tomorrow, I believe, August 16th, so maybe the Justice will make even more moves before that time comes. And now, I mean, if they were to stay where they are right now with the rest of the run, roster, Kalios would be the tank player, and obviously they'd take a big hit there. He wasn't starting for a reason in this Junker Queen meta. That really sucks for the Justice and their fans. They were just starting to get some momentum, and now it's halted completely, and quite possibly forever. In a perfect world, maybe the rest of their playmakers could hold down the four, but that's if they're sticking around, and that's the most terrifying part about all of this. But hey, if you're the Boston Uprising, at least you're winners in this situation, as Mag is a major upgrade over Itzal, and he could potentially be better than Paul as well as a starter. This is huge for them. This is probably the best tank player they've ever had in theory on paper since like Gamsu, let's say. And obviously Mag has a way higher ceiling than Gamsu ever did, so this is a huge pickup, and he could quite possibly make a difference immediately for a Boston team that is somewhat on the rise. You maybe feel a little bit bad for Punk, seeing as his starting job could be taken away really soon, and he's been a decent starter this year, but Mag's potential is just so high, and at the very least, if you want to think about it positively, you have a good main tank player and a good off tank player now to choose from. You have a legit tank rotation finally if you're the Boston Uprising. I think Mag is a solid pickup for this team and I'm super pumped to see if he can end up being that difference maker that takes them from like super meh and average to potentially slightly above average and like a dark horse play-in contender by the time this year ends. But now I wanted to get back into the whole justice thing because this is a real disaster. It is a very bad sign that they are this concerned about the direction of the league, that they're so willing to just get rid of some of their top players off of their books so they could end up having to not spend as much money on a league that apparently is not worth investing in. Like, what does that tell you about the future? That is not good. But it's clear that it's tearing the justice apart and that a lot of their guys inside are not happy. Their general manager, or I'm assuming maybe even former general manager at this point, Pri, took down all of his Justice stuff on Twitter, including his profile picture and banner and all of that, and he also liked a tweet talking about someone saying, oh, Pri wouldn't have done this if he was in charge, so clearly some big-time stuff is going on behind the scenes. He's not happy, maybe there was some resistance going on, but the Justice are not in a great state, and I'm assuming a lot of other teams are starting to share that same thought process based off of what we know. I feel like some sort of big implosion is coming, ladies and gentlemen. I just cannot shake that feeling that we're in for a really, really rough rest of this year and potentially next year. Who knows what's going to happen? Because it's not just like the Eternal and the Justice and some of their people are all upset. There are others as well. Like there's this deleted tweet by Dipe, coach of the Vancouver Titans, complaining about a whole bunch of different things, including having to pay for his own meals and not having his own jersey, having to pay for all of his own expenses. Like, what the heck is the deal with that? What is going on? And the real kicker is that he doesn't have health insurance covered? Like, what? What is going on? So Overwatch League staff and potentially players just not get benefits? Is it not worth being in this league whatsoever? Is that the vibe that we're getting now? And what about players? Do they have any sort of leverage whatsoever? What are their benefits in this situation? This is exactly why we need some sort of player union. People have been advocating for it for years now, and it's so easy to see why here in this current situation. They have absolutely nothing to bargain with. And that, my friends, is the difference between the Overwatch League and a true professional league. They have collective bargaining in like your big sports leagues. That's what the Overwatch League needs. You can't have all of your players and your staff, your coaches, and everybody else involved behind the scenes with no benefits, no leverage. That's totally unfair, and I can totally see why everybody right now thinks that this league is going down under. It's so messed up. Like, I'd love to know, are all these players who are getting suddenly dropped midseason getting all of their money that they were supposed to get from their salary this year? I sure hope so. Like, just the fact that we're seeing 
entire rosters essentially get released like this just because they can is so crazy to me. Like, this used to be such a rare occurrence, players getting dropped consistently like this, but it is happening so often this year. I get it, Overwatch 2 is a new game, you have different needs and whatnot, but this is ridiculous, and clearly it goes beyond just meta needs and roster fits and everything. There's got to be a bigger picture here. And I mean, it's just so unfair to all of these guys who are losing their jobs suddenly. Like, this was their dream. They're just trying to make an honest living. It's understandable when it happens occasionally, but when things keep popping up left and right and nobody's job is safe, that's when it becomes a real problem. A lot of these guys and contenders, let's say, are going to be like, what's the point? What's the point of grinding? What's the point of grinding Overwatch in particular when this could be my future someday? Like... I can't blame people for wanting to quit at this point. It's disgusting. Remember when Vancouver released their runaway core back in the day? Yeah, that was pretty crazy, but that was a very rare thing. That's not something that we ever thought we'd see again, or at least for a very long time. But now we could be seeing it multiple times in one season. And I say that again because there's a real possibility that Justice could be moving on from their entire roster as well. That is the rumor, at least, that they're looking into a brand new contenders roster from somewhere else, potentially Europe. We could be seeing people like Ben Best come back to the league, but we shall see. And something that's also worth mentioning that is very terrifying is clearly a lot of these organizations are starting to rebel against the Overwatch League, and they're starting to limit test because they are so upset by what's going on with the league's financial prospects. One of the famous reporters and journalists in this scene, Yiska, made some very interesting and insightful tweets that I'd like to read out. First, he said, Power dynamics have shifted away from player security to org options. Worse yet, we're in a post-good faith era with rules now. Many orgs have started limit testing. As disgruntlement grows with Owl's financial situation, the battle is fought on the back of players. He then goes on to say, Rules need to be designed with the assumption that they are going to be exploited to their limits. Let's hope that Owl has retained enough leverage to force a return to decency. Clearly, a lot of these organizations do not care anymore. They're all pissed off, and they're just gonna do what they want, and that is horrible. Overwatch League is losing the battle in so many different aspects right now. All the organizations aren't happy, the players aren't happy, even the fans aren't happy because of all of this nonsense, as well as like a somewhat boring meta. We're in a very tough spot, ladies and gentlemen. Again, I'm someone who really likes to stay positive because I love this league to death, but right now it is very difficult to do so. This is one of those situations that is an exception. There is cause for concern, and I'd like to hear all of your thoughts down in the comments below as we wrap up today's video. What are your thoughts on what is going on, and do you have any other insight that I maybe missed out on in this video, let's keep that discussion going down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video and you want more Overwatch League news content just like this, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you're new. And until next time, this is ATP, signing out. Please hope that the league isn't cancelled. Peace.